Logitech's Pro Direct Drive Wheel and Load Cell Pedals came out and I was fortunate enough to have one of each sent by Logitech for review. One of the main points of this wheel is the console support. So today's video is about the usability of this wheel on the consoles, in this case, the PlayStation 4. So that means checking scenarios that are important to console players like using this on the desk. How is the support of some of the titles out there? Sadly, I have to do this on the PlayStation 4 because it's 2022 and there's still no stock of the PlayStation 5. Details first, the equipment is only sold online. There won't be any sales in brick and mortar stores. The wheelbase comes with the 30 centimeter wheel and is 999 US dollars or 1099 euros. Pedals are $350 or 389 euros. This wheelbase is a direct drive with 11 Newton meters, 1080 degree rotation, which is something new for direct drives and the quick release system. The throttle and clutch are hull sensors the brake pedal is a load cell that is rated at 100 kilos. They are totally customizable with interchangeable springs and elastomers. There will be more info at the full review. This video is once again about the console perspective. There's really no point doing a full review again, but that means if you want to play on a console, be prepared to buy both. That means 1,350 US dollars or about 1,500 euros. First of all, size. Despite all the justifications out there, size does indeed matter. This wheel is huge. Here are some comparisons. It's really a chunky boy. There's two ways to mount it are mounted with this triangle shape. The two on the rear are regular Logitech mounts. The one on the front, not all plates will have it. My solution was to use two bolts and then the provided clamp. Because the angle of this video is console usage, this wheel was built with console users in mind and that also includes the usability of this uh, wheelbase on the desk. Basically, you just remove this cover over here and then you install the clamp you just push the wheel to the back until you can't move no more and then basically just tighten it up just about half a turn and then the wheel is basically stuck and when I mean stuck it is stuck this is not going to move anywhere the problem is because this thing has 10 11 newton meters of torque while the wheel might not move anywhere definitely uh, the desk might so you do need to lower your uh, torque level for this wheelbase. For the pedals, same deal. First of all, they are huge. Secondly, they are massive. Brake pedal is a load cell. The throttle and clutch are hull sensors. Each pedal can be customized, moved side to side, outright removed and have a spring or elastomer changed. On the back, you'll have pads, but no spring activated spikes. And then you have six mounting bolts if you want to use this on a sim rig or on a wheel stand. By undoing the bolts, the pedals can be moved or removed. USB lead is inside and can be routed left or right. And how long this pedal set is, and it is really long, it is determinant for the pedal stability on the floor. More and more PlayStation users are getting sim rigs, and this is where this equipment shines. You can finally start to crank up all of the forces to extract more performance out of this, a little more detail if you need to. On the case of the wheel, it's not all desks that can be, you know, can be have uh, five newton meters or something like that. You can't really crank up to that, otherwise it's just going to break uh, those desks. But in the case of the pedals, it's also the situation where you can really start to crank up a little more of the brake force. In one extreme, you have people you it really they really like to use all the body to to brake it, so you need to use a lot of force on your legs to activate it fully. Uh, but on the other sense, when you're using it on a floor, you need to lower it in enough. And when you are correctly seated, it just feels too light. Getting it on a sim rig, it opens you the possibility of at least choosing which extreme you want to run. Or if you want to use what I'm doing, which is about 50% brake force. Uh, and in that case, it just you know makes this pedal set okay. It is natural to use, but for this price, and you have to buy this pedal set at the moment if you really want to use uh, this wheel on a PlayStation. I mean, it's it's okay, but you know, for me, the price is really not there. It breaks well, it it throttles okay, but you know, there are there are better pedals for the prices, including Fanatec SL Elite V2s. But of course, you can cannot cannot connect it to this wheel. 
Future random call sign over here. You know I am from the future because this pillow says subscribe. On Gran Turismo 7, this rotary over here serves to change you no know, the maps if you are on traction control, the brake bias, and whatever. And this one moves up and down. Though for this iteration in this update of Gran Turismo 7, if you move it up, it will go up to maximum. And if you move it down, it goes down to minimum. There'll be an update on October somewhere that will fix this. Gran Turismo is one of the titles where the true force really shines. I haven't tried Grid, but it here it really feels like the, the experience. It's truly transformative. Uh, true force, of course, can be really easily overdone. There's like a small window where it disappears and there's a window where it just becomes obvious that you are overdoing it. I wish that Gran Turismo had more options for it, but you can, you know, put everything on a wheel and you only really need to use 10 to 15, 20% at most of the true force. Otherwise, after that, you're really going to feel like a lot of vibrations that won't really make sense. It starts to uh, go over any other effect so you need to be careful with it and once you are careful with it and find that uh thin line for you it really feels like it's a, a 3d experience on a four seat back in the case that i've it, it's very difficult to find something really similar with other brands doesn't matter what it is or if they have rumble motors or not true force is definitely way better than run ball motors you might have in wheels for example on the fanatec ecosystem and it comes you know for every single wheel but sadly it's not integrated with every single piece of software and its implementation will depend of course on the software in the case of the pc i racing doesn't do it really well but the set of course of competizione for me at least on the pc is absolutely fantastic in here on gran turismo 7 it is also very very good in here with a road car tuned road car very tuned road car it just feels like it's completely engaging and immersive to you while driving here you know even though i know this is a sim it really feels like it's natural if the CSLDD was for me a great game changer because it set a new standard for what should be the access for a, a direct drive and for me direct drive should be affordable in this one let's be honest it isn't really this wheel though it's still setting for me a standard in terms of what is immersive and how honestly sim racing titles should actually feel in your hands this current setup is probably the best way to test this wheel in a non-optimal setup first of all i'm using the wheel at five new meters in the desk and the pedals are load cell and they are on the floor and they're set about 15% brake force. I'm on a chair that is, you know, an office chair stuck in the place with two shoes. Definitely not optimal. A lot of people will be using Gran Turismo 7 in the same way or Seto Corsa Competizione or any other type of sim racing title or racing title. And the other reason is that while this wheel is compatible with everything, the pro setup of it, as in the new wheel type, is not recognized everywhere. Assetto Corsa Competizione is the case, and the reason why I'm, I'm using Assetto Corsa Competizione to test it is that this wheel has a compatibility mode, and the compatibility mode works as a G923 in order to be recognized in the game. That means every title that is compatible with the Logitech G923 PC or console will be compatible with this wheel one way or the other you just set it up very easily the setups are a little bit different you can change the power you can change the dampener but you don't have all the fine details this is a true force enabled title i'm feeling true force but i can tell you that the true force here is not good at all it really feels like a g a g923 even set up at really low which is kind of interesting because the Logitech True Force system on a PC for Seto Corsa Competizione is some of the best things that I've ever tried in sim racing that is supposed to be a gimmick but ends up not being a gimmick at all. It gives you an extra dimension to the uh, your racing. Here at the, this version of a Seto Corsa Competizione, it might change in the future, I'm not totally sure. It's just not good. The driving is responsive even at this low FPS. I mean, it works quite well. 
but it's definitely not optimized for this wheel. Once it gets optimized, once it gets a new gen release or whatever, it might be an excellent title to test. I would have to get a PlayStation 5 in the future, but as it is, as a desk setup, if you get, you know, a wheel stand or something like that, or even on a desk, and if you have, for example, instead of, uh, instead of these normal wheels, you have caster wheels, <clears throat> I do have caster wheels as well, this might be a setup that is very usable, I've used it on Gran Turismo 7, it was perfect to use, and as a wheel to be used on a desk, I don't think there's any better wheel than this one, because of how good this wheel clamp is. This is a fantastic wheelbase. I love the wheelbase, I love the four seat back, I love the wheel itself, the quick release, there's plenty to like about this wheelbase. The pedals are fantastic on the floor, but on the rig, they are average. The price is not right there. And that's really the point, isn't it? It's high price tag will make you think twice. It will give you big doubts if you are racing on the console alone, if you should get this independently of the quality of the four seat back, the quality of the materials, the quality of true force where it is actually working, which at the moment that I've tried is just Gran Turismo 7. Independently, if you get the load cell or not, it's 1400 euros if you are going to play on the console. You cannot get any pedal separately besides this one, yet you cannot use the old Logitech pedals because the ecosystem as of this moment, it's super limited to whatever it comes with. In this case, you just have two products. You get just the wheelbase, which comes with the wheel and also the pro pedals. You have nothing else at the moment. When the adapters are released, maybe the calculations will change a little bit when you can use the shifter from the old models, when you can use the pedals as well. But as of this moment, 1400 euros can get you basically a DD Pro with the wheel of your choice and a set of load cell pedals and you have plenty to choose from. And there's also the issue of an upgrade path. As of this moment, because there isn't any adapter, there isn't really an update path for people who are on the Logitech G923. And even if there was, it isn't really an upgrade path. This is definitely an upgrade, but it's not a small step. You are going in price to something really premium. While, once again, I enjoy the four seat back of it, and I enjoy it very, very much, I don't think it's justifiable for just the consoles alone. Though, if you race on a PC, there'll be a wider selection of titles, true force or not enabled, and in my experience, they tend to be quite good. So in that case, if you are looking for the console and then also race in the PC like I do, your calculations might change somewhat. And if you want to check out how this wheel actually works on the PC, check out this video. It will give you a lot of information about the Pro Wheel as well.